Hello to everyone, my name is Maria, or as you can see by my YouTube channel name, Scented Fawn. Today is a very important day for me because I finally decided to start my own YouTube channel, which will be dedicated to perfumes and perfumery. I've been into perfumes for around 10 years now, and I have quite a big collection, not a huge one, because of course everything is subject to the laws of relativity, but I think that it's a good place to start. So today I'm starting with a very interesting theme for me because it combines two of my passions actually. The first one being perfumery and the second one, theater. So today you're going to watch and learn about eight perfumes inspired by Shakespeare and his plays. <laughs> this content please follow my video and be my first subscriber if you wish. I also have an Instagram page with the name Scented Fawn where I do collage reviews of perfumes so you can follow me there if you wish of course again. So with no further ado let's begin. This bud of love by summer's ripening breath may prove a bourgeois flower when next so we meet. So you're right now in one of the most famous plays of Shakespeare and one of the youngest actually because it was written between 1591 and 1595 and is considered to be uh, inspired by a tradition of tragic romances which stretches into antiquity. So this play revolves around two young lovers who fall utterly and completely in love but are destined to face the tragic events of their choice due to the hatred between their families. And of course, the play I'm talking about is Romeo and Juliet, which is located in Verona, Italy. So for this play, I got inspired by the location influenced by my imagination. It is spring in my mind and all the cities blooming the same way as Romeo and Juliet's love is blooming. We find, I find myself in the mansion of Juliet, her home, uh, which has a beautiful rose garden. And I imagine all sorts of flowers hanging from the terraces and the balconies of the mansion. There's jasmine there, honeysuckle, roses, all colors of roses. And these flowers are sweet and full of nectar, the same way as Juliet and Romeo are filled with the longing of touching each other and be with each other. They are in love. So for this picture in my mind, I chose Love Don't Be Shy by Killian. This perfume, this is a favorite of mine. It's, uh, it is a gift from my kind brother and I, I really thank him for this gift. And it's, if I had to describe it in one line, love is exuberance in liquid form. It is nectary sweet and has a thick, passionate, romantic, honeyed floral heart. This perfume, which feels like a floral syrup, attracts and glamours the wearer with its caramelic floral sweetness. The title of the perfume, the name, mentions Don't Be Shy. And the truth is that these two young lovers, there is no shyness between them. There is just essential attraction and there are no boundaries, no ethic boundaries, no fear for the future. They just live their love to the full. They chase each other in the, in the rose garden, in this floral garden, and they live their love and life to the full without ever imagining what will happen in the future. So the future has not yet arrived. We find ourselves in this happy moment where everything is blooming. And this is what Love by Killian evokes to me. I know a bank where the wild thorn blows, where oxlips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with Lucius Woodbine with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. As you can see, I added some jewelry, thought it would be fitting. 
it's a heart i like it very much so uh with no further ado this play written around 1595 and 1596 it's probably one of my favorite Shakespeare plays and it may be one of my favorite plays in general because it revolves around all the things I love. Fairies, magic potions, forests, kings and queens of the forests, love, young love, silly love, romance, jealousy, all these in the most light-hearted way. It almost feels like flying. It's very light and airy and not serious at all. It may be deep, but not serious. And I think that A Midsummer Dream should, should feel as impalpable as, as I describe a bit on the story. This play revolves around the marriage of Theseus and Hippolyte. These are Greek names, so in Greek they are Theseus and Hippolyte. And four uh, young Athenian lovers and a theater troupe which travels for a show. And all these end up in a magical forest where fairies and magical creatures manipulate humans to have fun and live their magical lives. And the master of all the fairies is King Oberon and his wife, Queen Titania. Actually, there is a very nice movie based on the play. I think the name is Midsummer Night's Dream also, yes. And Titania is being portrayed by Michelle Pfeiffer and she's great in this part, it really suits her. So for this play, I chose three perfumes. And the first one is LM by Lolita Lempica. This perfume is sadly discontinued. So let me just describe it a little bit. This perfume to begin with has a beautiful golden green nuance and it has some pretty leaves on the cup and around the bottle and along with the letters of the bottle and the leaves it creates the impression of a foliage surrounding the bottle which I find pretty nice and I think the leaves might be fig tree leaves or ivy leaves I'm not sure so on the scent let me just smell it again this perfume, which I love, <laughs> has green elements, citrus elements, and coconut elements, along with a discreet sugar sweetness, which envelops all the other notes. The tropical in here to my nose is not a tropical coconut. It's a raw uh, green coconut. It has this green milkiness the same green milkiness that gets radiated from the fig tree leaves maybe in the summer. I don't know if you're familiar with the scent. It's We have many fig trees here in Greece. I actually have one in my garden. And it, there's a beautiful green, creamy, milky scent in the summer. This is, it's, it's a luscious, green, vibrant and sparkly scent with um, a fluttering, not flattering, it's also flattering, but I mean flickering aura, like the aura of a fairy that flies in the summer forest. And I find it so appropriate for this play. I actually find that all the Lolita Lampicas are appropriate for the atmosphere of the play. The, their presentation, the bottles, the, the, the aesthetics, it's very, very fitting. There is a citric sweetness in here that I find similar to the new La Vie Belle Soleil Cristal, uh, but the latter is very, very sweet. It's sweet even for me who have a weakness for gourmand, for gourmand. So I actually prefer this one a little bit more, but of course that's a matter of taste and everybody has its own, has his own taste. For the second perfume, a sip of green tea, which is also matching with the play. <laughs> So for the second perfume, I got inspired by the love juice potion that creates all the misunderstandings and fun in this play. This is a love potion that has the ability to make someone fall in love with the first person or creature he encounters as soon as the potion gets poured upon the eyelids of the victim. And after a lot of thought, I decided that this love juice potion should smell dangerously sweet and fruity like a magical 
poisonous fruit of the forest. And for this reason, I chose Wild Cherry by Mansera. I only have a sample at the moment, but I hope that I will get a bottle very soon because I really love the scent. So this scent, I have actually sprayed it on me just a few moments ago, a few seconds, and it's it has um, a sweet cherry juiciness along with the citric sourness, but this sourness accentuates the sweetness and highlights the cherry pulp feeling. It actually has, it feels very fleshy. I can almost feel the flesh of the cherry. And you know, cherry has this uh, red fruit, deep red fruit quality, which also in the background has a bit of darkness. So I think it's very appropriate for this love potion juice. After some time, uh, some floral qualities step in and there's also a minty patchouli which gives to the whole blend a very interesting twist like like a trick like a magical trick and i really love that aspect so the love potion juice perfume i chose is wild cherry by mancera of course i would love to read your opinion about which perfume feels like a love juice potion to you. For the third perfume, I got inspired by the bed that Tanya lies in the middle of the forest. I imagined the bed being made of chamomile, a chamomile field, and above her there is a ceiling of flowers, and it has fireflies and twinkling lights, and uh, there's an explosion of floral odors. For this reason, the perfume I'm choosing is the most divine gardenia perfume I have ever encountered, which also features notes of roses and musk, as Shakespeare described it in his text. And this is Gardenia Isabey by Isabey Paris. Let me just get a whiff of this divine smell. Oh no, 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 no. This is my first niche infatuation and I still love it just as much. It's the most divine, incredible gardenia perfume I have encountered. It's not a soliflor gardenia, even though the name is gardenia. It has other flowers as well, like iris, roses, and ylang-ylang. So it feels like a festive bouquet of flowers with sweet musk. It is a very creamy, round, plethoric and soft at the same time bouquet of flowers. The best application for this perfume, in my opinion, of course, is on your hair. But please, if you do such a thing, do it with caution and from a distance because otherwise you may harm your beautiful hair. So do it from a great, great distance like this. Spray, don't worry because it's very intense. This way, this perfume leaves the most irresistible aura you, you will leave a feminine, creamy scent trail and you will get tons of compliments. I have gotten compliments every time I wore it and I've been wearing this perfume for 10 years now. It's absolutely stunning. It gets beautifully highlighted in the summer when your skin is warm and then it radiates of alluring and, and graceful white flowers and sweet musk. It also has a beautiful piquant, piquant orange uh, quality, which gives a bit of juiciness to the blend. So this is divine. And I think it's the perfume of Queen Titania. It's absolutely majestic. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince. And flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. We are now arriving in the land of Shakespearean Denmark. 
and Hamlet. This tragedy written between 1599 and 1601 and is one of the most famous plays of Shakespeare, of course, along with Romeo and Juliet. Don't forget the line, to be or not to be, that is the question, is one of the most famous lines in theatre, isn't it? So, this play revolves around Hamlet, the Prince of Denmark, and his revenge against his uncle Claudius, who has killed his father, became the king, and married his mother. This is a very ghostly and dark play uh, with uh, themes of revenge and corruption. Uh, there is this phrase, there's something rotten in the state of Denmark, which is very characteristic. But there are also uh, religious themes, political themes, and themes revolving around the female element, since the female figures, Ophelia and Gertrude, um, play a, a very significant role in this tragedy and die in the end. So for this play, I chose two dark and melancholic scenes. The first one being Joe Malone's Oris Root and Sandalwood, Cologne Intense. Its main characteristics would be its powderiness for sure, its coldness, a distinct woodiness in the background, and some um, interesting floral twists also in the background. When I say coldness, I mean a personal impression I have with some uh, sharp powdery scents that feature the note of iris flower, which is somehow carroty. And since this perfume features the note of oris root, which is the root of iris flower, that totally makes sense to me. There's this ruthy, earthy, carroty quality, like it, is, like it has just been cropped out of the earth. The, the floral qualities give me the impression of something melancholic. And I think it's because it's this violet vibe with, with its purple color. And there is this sweet uh, nostalgic powderiness um, with uh, some dewy, airy aspects. I get quite a big amount of leathery aspects that must be due to the labdanum, which is also an ingredient of the scent. And there is also a note which I hadn't I hadn't uh, come across before, uh, called Cypriot scariosis, something like that. It's mentioned in Fragrantica as being a, an Indian woody note with facets of vetiver and cedar wood. And this makes sense to me because I really can get a, a, a beautiful um, foresty woodiness in the background. What really surprised me is that there is no sandalwood in here and the name mentions sandalwood. So I don't know why, maybe it's a, a mistake in, of the database or something else, I'm not sure. Anyway, the girl that gave it to me, uh, that was very funny, told me that she didn't want it because she would only wear it in a heavy metal concert. And I really laughed with this comment because it somehow describes very nicely its poetic darkness. So this uh, purple and dark, cold, metallic scent of Jo Malone fits, I think, perfectly the gloomy landscape of Denmark in Shakespeare's Hamlet. One more perfume for Hamlet, and this could be no other than Dior Poison by Christian Dior. This classic, famous, dark purple and lethal lethal scent. Why I chose poison? Because of the mention of a poisonous botanical substance in Hamlet's tragedy uh, called Hebenon or Hebona, which is described as the agent of death of Hamlet's father. So I have heard many reviews mentioning that this perfume is not dark to them and that the whole dark impression uh, derives from its presentation, the bottle, the color, and the name. But to tell you the truth, I have to disagree because this fragrance to me uh, in the beginning of its wear 
smells exactly as I would imagine snake poison to smell. I haven't smelled snake poison and I don't want to smell it. <laughs> but I, in my imagination, snake poison smells like the beginning of poison. If I had to break down what I get, it's a sharp acetone-like medicinal quality, which might derive from the combination of the indolic aspects of tuberose, the poppy plum, uh, along with the warm balsamic apoponax and the incense. I think the combination of all these notes create um, a dark black blend, which is poison. So after um, half an hour uh, on my skin, it becomes more gentle and um, it it starts to to radiate its beautiful warm fruity and spicy qualities the beginning of this is poisonous on my skin but after some time it becomes the version i can bear i don't mean that in in a bad way at all i think this is an exquisite perfume done with mastery and uh, that's the beauty of perfumery, that every perfume shows a different face on each skin and on each personality. So the beginning may not be my kind of taste, but it may very well be a pretty, extremely impressive fragrance on someone else. And that is what I love in perfumes. I even love perfumes I don't love, because they have this, this, magical, this magical ability. We are such stuff as dreams are made of, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. So now we arrive in a play that is considered to be one of the last plays of Shakespeare, written between 1609 and 1611. And this play is The Tempest. This story begins with a tempest. A tempest, which gives the title to the play. The rest of the play takes place on a remote island, which is inhabited by sorcerer Prospero and his daughter Miranda, along with the monstrous figure called Caliban and an airy spirit called Ariel, both of whom are servants of Prospero. Prospero was in the past the Duke of Milan, but his brother Antonio betrayed him to usurp the dukedom for himself and sent him along with his baby daughter Miranda to this land, to this island. And Prospero, because he is a bookish type, he, he has read a lot, uh, has learned to tame the spirits and forces of nature. This play has metaphysical components, philosophical themes and also a lot of enchantment which makes it one of my favorite plays of Shakespeare again with songs and dances of spirits, sea elements and magic. This play includes one of the most beautiful lines in theater for me and that is the one I put in the intro which is we are such stuff as dreams are made on and our life is rounded with a sleep. So, inspired by this line, I started thinking which fragrance would encapsulate the essence of dreams, and I found it. It's one of my favorite perfumes at the moment, and I think it will stay a favorite for a long time. And this is Gentle Fluidity Gold by Maison Francisque Cour de Gien. I hope I say that correctly. This perfume has one of the most extraordinary textures I have encountered in a scent. The reason I love it so much is almost not because of the notes. And don't get me wrong, um, the notes are wonderful and it smells amazing. But what I get is the most incredible structure and composition, which feels like a cloud of stardust, like a bed of white roses and feathers and liquid gold. It has notes of vanilla, amber, juniper berries, nutmeg, coriander, musk, and woodsy notes. But my whole impression is that of a cloak 
weaved with the fluffy marshmallows, powder dust, dreams, and fantasy. It is, it is like a floating castle in the air. So this is the essence of dreams for me. Gentle Fluidity Gold by MFK. The second perfume I chose to combine with The Tempest is Etoile de Rem by Reminiscence. This perfume has a very nice bottle, which looks like um, a treasure jewel found in the depths of the sea. And it has also a coral cap, which is very fitting and pretty nice. Now, when I smell it from the bottle, I get something salty and marine, and maybe some driftwood and a bit of white flowers. It's very fresh and summery. Um, I will spray it on my skin because I haven't tested it for a long time now. So yes, the first impression is very, very salty. And I can detect in the background um, almost the heodine compound. You know, uh, see water has this heodine compound and it's there. So I think if you want to get this one, you must be prepared for this aspect of the perfume, this uh, salty sea aspect, because it's very uncommon and distinct. And uh, someone may find it beautiful and someone else may find it too marine, maybe, and appalling. But for me, the, the breezy air uh, on this remote island, um, which has captured the scent of the sea, the greenery, the wildflowers and the woods and where sorcery and nature dance along would definitely smell like this. So it has also a magical component. So this is Etoile de Rem by Reminiscence for The Tempest of Shakespeare. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. So this has been our fragrance trip to the Shakespearean lands. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I'm really looking forward to hear about what fragrances you would personally associate with Shakespeare and his plays. This was a great first experience and I hope I will see you again in my next video. Goodbye until then.